Ah, the Apple Vision Pro. Apple's grand dive into the let's strap a computer to your face trend. At a cool starting price of $3,499, it's not just a face computer. It's the Maserati of face computers, promising to usher us into the era of spatial computing. But is it worth it? Let's find out before we even think about selling our kidneys. I had the courage, I'd sell my kidney. The Vision Pro is Apple's first mixed reality device. Like any Apple device, it's very intuitive. It's as if the Oculus Rift in an iPad had a baby. We just wanted to share with you that it's a boy. Now, Apple's marketing juggernaut insists this isn't just a VR headset. It's a spatial computer. Well, in a way it is, but I could say the same thing with any standalone VR headset. The Vision Pro looks like what happens when a ski mask meets high fashion. It's sleek, it's polished, and you look like a cybernetic owl wearing it. <laughs> Joking aside, it does look like a nice piece of hardware, and it's undeniably Apple. Think iPhone 6 meets AirPods Max with Apple Watch controls. It's also smaller than you'd expect, which is a relief at first, but once you wear it, well, let's say, all the metal and glass and premium build quality weighed this down to a chunky 1.3 pounds. That's heavy, Robin, real heavy. For context, the MetaQuest 3 weighed 1.1 pounds, and that's with a battery built in the device. The battery pack on the Vision Pro is completely separate from the actual headset. Nothing says cutting edge technology like having to tether yourself to a battery pack because they couldn't figure out how to fit it inside. What? It's just weird. I mean, the battery pack itself is unnecessarily heavy at 12 and a half ounces or 353 grams since it only has a battery capacity of 3166 milliamp hours, which should last you a good two and a half hours of use. I get it. This is an early luxury product. But I wish they bumped the battery capacity instead of this. And the most frustrating part of it all? The cable that connects to the battery pack isn't even removable. So you have to be extra careful not to break it. Yeah, sure. Just don't break it. Using the Vision Pro is a series of trade-offs that'll make you question your life's choices. Do you want to replace your perfectly good vision with screens? Are you prepared to carry around a giant case instead of a sleek laptop bag? Is it worth looking like you're diving into the matrix every time you want to check your email? Sure, the Vision Pro can teleport you to the moon or halfway to Joshua Tree. But last time I checked, so could a ton of different other VR headsets. The difference? They don't cost three and a half grand. Now let's cut to the chase. The Vision Pro is undeniably a marvel of technology. It's like Apple decided to show off by solving the hardest puzzles in VR and AR, then wrapped it all in a design that screams, I'm from the future. But then they also decided that future means dealing with some odd choices, like the front display that's supposed to show your eyes to the world, but really just makes you look like you're lost in a very expensive daydream, or even like a creep at the very least. The eye and hand tracking is very good and a ton of people, including myself, would call it the best yet. Best thing there is. But as the fine folk from The Verge said, it's magic until it's not. One minute you might feel like a wizard as good as Dumbledore, but the next you might feel as if you're casting a Vada Kedavra when all you wanted to do was to resize a window. Although props to Apple, it seems like the video pass-through technology and the overall experience is so good you'll almost forget that you're looking at the world through a filter. At least, it has that going for it. In the end, the Vision Pro feels like the prologue to a book Apple's still writing. It's a glimpse into a future where we might all be wandering around bumping into furnitures because we're too busy living in our headsets. It's arguably the best VR experience out there. If you've got pockets deeper than the Mariana Trench and don't mind the quirky little compromises that come with it, but let's be real. This is a first-gen product, a shiny, expensive stepping stone to whatever Apple's really aiming for. It's not the perfect product, but it's the best we've got for now. If you're the kind of person who likes owning the first iteration of Apple's experiments, then by all means, dive in. 
Just remember, this is destined to fail, and I think even Apple knows that. It's sort of like the folding phones from Samsung, but in a few years, I think the Apple Vision lineup can become more successful with more support for more apps and maybe even a more affordable price tag. So should you buy it? If you're an early adopter with a penchant for tech luxury and a wallet that won't quit, sure, feel free to go for it. For the rest of us, maybe let's wait for the sequel, or maybe even after two or three versions. Let's wait it out. Only time will tell. But for now, this is Marty, I get to keep my kidney, and I'll see you tomorrow.